Hello, Dr. Mindy Curry here again. And today I'm going to do a demonstration on how to make a spearmint lemon verbena lip balm. And here's the spearmint monster right next to me. It's just, just madness on my front porch. This is spearmint, otherwise known as mintha spicata. And it's just a generally calming, menthol rich, very cooling herb. And this has been used a lot in medicinal uses, a lot in culinary uses. Today we're going to do a, basically a topical use, a skin use of this. And, and it's really great. Another thing about spearmint is that it's just really nutrient dense. And so wherever you use it, it's just really nourishing to whatever cells it touches because of all the, the just the the vitamins and minerals that come out of these leaves into directly absorb through your skin onto your cells, providing just that a little extra boost. Um, it's a uh, let's see, it's antibacterial, it's anti-inflammatory, and that means it just really helps to heal cracks and scratches. You might get chapped lips, cracked lips, very anti-inflammatory and just really helps heal and just soothes any kind of like burning from too long out in the sun. Um, it stimulates blood perfusion to that area, which then also speeds up healing. Um, it's also a, a, just a great antioxidant in there. Um, and that reduces generally the signs of aging and reduces damage again from the sun radiation from the sun can really be harsh on on your lips and this can really kind of nourish and soothe and anti-inflame and antioxidant it all back into health so that's one reason i'm going to use that in my lip balm the other reason being look at this monster got to do something with it because it's got to go it's taken over my whole porch so let's do a bit of uh, harvesting of this <coughs> Basically, I like to wait until it's blooming. It's definitely been blooming for a while, even a little past its prime here. Um, but it's going to do great for the purposes I have, and it needs to go. So let's just chop, chop it down to a reasonable size. Here it is. And one thing you've got to see about spearmint is these leaves, they look like little spears. That's why they're called, they've got spear-shaped leaves, so spearmint. Um, if you look closely at it, you'll also see a square stem. That is the sign of the mint family in general, that square stem. Mm, you can smell it, just that really strong, delicious mint flavor. It's a lot like peppermint, but also it's more of its own thing. get down in here and get a good look at it. You can see it's got lovely little flowers. They've gone a little too late in the season. Not as pretty as they could be, but here's, here's a real cute one down here. And they're younger. They're a bit more of a delightful green, but towards the end of the fall is where we're at going to be harvesting this. Soaking it into an oil. And just drawing it for teas and bath use. I've got a lot of it. Here it goes. quite spectacular. I'm back. <laughs> and here it is. My giant mint harvest. Look at that. It's beautiful.
Now spearmint, it's a very robust herb. If you plant it in the garden, expect to have it all over your garden. It's over there, it's over there. It's kind of everywhere, everywhere in between. And every so often I go and I just take advantage of that and harvest just a big old wad of it. Do everything I want. It's a, here's some younger ones. Some beautiful flowers left on them. Notice those very bright green spear-like leaves. And purple, purple flowers square stems. These stems out here are a little bit redder than the ones out front were. And there they are. Hey, in the backyard now with my lemon verbena. This is Aloysia citradora and it's a South American perennial herb. Mm. And it just has the most refreshing scent. It's just a smell that just has such an anti-anxiety and very calming effect that you're going to love it. Mm, a very citrus smell, very much like a lemon, but it's a, uh, it's not a mint. It's uh, got a very round stem here, but the leaves are also very spear-like, so that's kind of fun. It's a uh, very antioxidant, and it's got citral, geranial, nerol, and verbascoside and those are some of the antioxidants that have been identified in the lemon verbena and it's just very soothing and healing and toning for the skin and it can fight inflammation too so just another thing that I'm gonna love to have both as just a scent and as just kind of a healing herb in my lip balm it is also used in teas and as medicine in other ways just a, a lovely little plant. That's mine. Lemon verbena. And to dry it, I've just got this drying rack. It's just a screen, a cheap screen from Home Depot. It works quite well. It folds up pretty small and then it extends out. Just a metal screen. You can dry things on there. There's that lemon verbena. And here's the spearmint. Now spearmint dries quite easily. You can also just loosely leave it into a basket and it'll probably dry pretty well and make sure the ends don't get yucky, but uh, I'll probably just leave that amount in the basket there to dry out, and that'll be just fine too. And you can hang it if you want to. You can hang it from a line in a dry room. You want it to be a cool, dark room that's got some circulation, it's not totally stagnant and moist. Don't want to mold, but uh, these are pretty easy to dry out. They're not too wet. They will dry nicely. Probably a few days I'll come back and they'll be ready to go. Okay, now we're back in my kitchen and we're going to get started here with the Liban Bervina and the Spearmint. We've got a crock pot, a mini crock pot, little guy on warm. Kind of better to use one of these ones that's smaller, obviously, because you don't want to have to use a bucket of oil. Um, and also because they often have a pretty good temperature range. This one goes all the way to warm, low, high, warm. You want one that has a warm setting for this. Um, you don't really want to boil your oil too long. And for this, we just want a gentle heat for a prolonged period of time to really infuse the essence of the lemon verbena and the spearmint into our oil. Um, oils 
can be kind of any skin loving oil that you like. Um, I've used grapeseed oil, almond oil, um, extra virgin olive oil is very common, uh, coconut oil. I'm going to use today probably avocado oil with some extra virgin olive oil. Um, but pretty much any oil that you really like putting in your skin, you can put into this chapstick, or I should say, excuse me, lip balm recipe. Trademark infringement. Okay, now that's over, let's go ahead. And I think I'm going to first, since we have a smaller amount of the lemon verbena, chop that right up in here. This is a fun little thing. It's a uh, an herb scissors. It's good for herbs that are not too thick. A nice leafy herb. You can really chop it up and get some really good um, chopping with that. And when you're done, then you just use the cleaning device and wash it off. But uh, let's try that with these guys because these are very light and fluffy. Yeah, it works pretty good. Even goes through these fairly thin stems. I think some of the thicker stems it won't. But for an infusion like this, it's not a big deal. In fact, I could just, on these thicker stems like this one, just kind of rough it down my hand, crunch it up a little bit. That's fine too, if you got a lot of thick stems. There's another thick one. And just rough it up a little bit. Let's get back to Chop Chop. Oh, I wish you could smell this right now. <clears throat> the smells. Oh, the smells. The fragrance of this lemon mervina is very lemony, very citrusy. Obviously, this is not a citrus plant, but that uh, convergent evolution is beautiful, isn't it? When you just roll it through your hands like this, you can break up the leaves, increase the surface area for the infusion to take place upon. And get kind of a nice crumble. Check that out. It's pretty good. And it's just a nice warm pot there. Well, plenty more room in that pot, so let's go ahead and add some spearmint. Where to even start? These are great. These are just a really hardcore kitchen shears. It's like Slee Moon. Mmm, Moon. I like that. <laughs> but I don't really need any kind of specific size for this. It's nice to just kind of get in there and get it in there. <laughs> there is just stuff flying everywhere. Little bits of pollen and seeds and whatever coming out of these flowers. Little flower bits, flower petals probably. <laughs> but we are getting there. Getting to the top of this little tiny crock pot. Try to crock it up. Try to cut it up just a little bit more. See if we can make some more room. The more herb we can get in the crock pot, 
the stronger our infusion will be. Now it would be super easy just to use some essential oils of spearmint and oh you've got some lovely lovely lip balm that way but that's just the essential oil it doesn't have any of the other constituents I mean look at this stuff it's, it's green the essential oil it's just one component here we're getting the whole plant oh and a little worm <laughs> Go down there. So yeah, watch out for <laughs> insects, spiders. Hopefully they've ran off during the drying process, but some stick around. Just saying, if nothing is eating your garden, then your garden is not part of the ecosystem. About it. Now just massage it, get it all broken up. Now you've got it in the pot. Rough it up. Mix it up. Get all the lemon verbena and the spearmint all mixed together. Oh, I wish you could be in this room right now. The smells, the smells. The aroma is just amazing. <laughs> I can live with my nose right in that hole. Let's see. Let's go ahead and pour in quite a bit of this avocado oil. It's my favorite oil right now. But it could be any skin oil you like. Add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil too. And go back to the avocado. There it is. You can see I've pretty much covered the herb in the oil, mostly. Go ahead and squish the stragglers down a little bit. And they will tend to go ahead and go down in there. Maybe a little bit more olive oil. I'm going to really cover that up. Get all, all the goodness you can achieve. Here it is. And we're just going to let that sit on warm for several days. Just infusing in there. And when it seems to be the place of beauty, we will pull it out, strain it out, and turn that into some lip balm. A few extra ingredients. I'll see you in a moment. And we're back in my kitchen. Here we are all set up. We've got this beautiful mini crock on warm, warm only, that's been going for several days now. And you can just smell just how delightful it is. Smell that. Oh. Ah, just a, a lemony, minty, smelly oil, very strong smelling oil, uh, very, very raw, rich smelling fragrance, not just that strong, menthol-y, spearminty, essential oil. This is the whole plant infused in there. 
And so you smell all the little bits, not just the oils. Uh, and so we are going to take that. First thing we need to do is uh, we're going to strain that. But first, let's see what temperature it's been sitting at just uh, for science. Where has it been here on the warm crock pot? Okay, so that's been sitting around 120 degrees Fahrenheit for a few days. <clears throat> Gives you an idea of what temperature you kind of want to achieve in your mini crock pot. You don't want to keep that on low or high where it's actually boiling for days. That would be too much, too much heat. You'd ruin some of the constituents. But a nice warm mini crock pot always does the does it for me. <clears throat> now what you got here, as you can see, just a big sloppy vat of delightful infused oil. Very green. You can see it's very green already. But you got all those big chunks in there and those would look a little awkward on your lips. So let's strain those out first. And what I've got to do that today is uh, this, it's a uh, a strainer for canning or a canning funnel with a strainer in it and I'm going to add to that um, this I think they call this a uh, broth bag but I find them to be just a great uh, substitute for cheesecloth cheesecloth can break up a little bit too much for me this has got a nice weave you can see it's going to let stuff through but also keep out the chunks. So let's go ahead and separate out our oil. definitely want to use a cheesecloth and not just a sieve for this because you really don't want those chunks in your final product. Okay, let's look at what we got here. Oh wow, we've got almost four cups of this really beautiful, amazing oil. <laughs> That's quite a lot. Well, let me empty out the crock pot and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've cleaned out the mini crock pot. The first thing I'm going to do now is pump that thing up too low while we figure out our measurements on other things. I'm going to get that higher because the melting point of beeswax is 150 degrees. So we're going to need to get that crock pot up a little bit higher and we're going to get our oil back in there warming that oil up to where we can melt that beeswax at 150, approximately 150 degrees. So I think I'm going to do about three. Okay, here's the lemon balm recipe, the basic lemon balm recipe. Three parts of an infused oil, one part of a plant-based butter. This time I'm going to use a cocoa butter. It's a nice chocolatey, delicious chocolatey smell. I love that chocolate and mint combination. A little bit of lemon on the side is going to be just so rich but uh, also um, one part beeswax. And with beeswax, 
you can go off with about one tablespoon of the beeswax pellets, a heaping tablespoon if you're going to do pellets, or a liquid tablespoon if you're going to be technical is equal to a half an ounce of beeswax. Um, you want to add some vitamin E oil to that. Vitamin E oil, I've got just this one from Trader Joe's. It's just a wonderful antioxidant that helps reverse uh, free radical damage in your skin. Um, some people say it's kind of plumping and gives a healthful glow to the lips specifically. Um, it can be of UV protectant and also reverse the pro problems caused by UV light. And uh, it's just a great preservative, so it'll make your lip balm last longer. If you're making kind of a big batch like I am today, I want this to last a uh, year or two. Or at least I don't want everybody going, oh, why is my lip balm so nasty within a few months? So vitamin E blend. A few people are sensitive to that, so be aware if you are, don't use it. You don't have to use vitamin E but I think it's a really great thing to add to a lip balm. Um, optionally, you can add other essential oils. This is kind of a general recipe card here for making lip balms of a variety of flavors. Um, but if you're gonna add essential oils, consider adding only about approximately two drops of essential oil per tube, or in this case, I'm using a tin. You don't want a lot of essential oils in your uh, lip balm because that can be very aggravating and actually irritate your lips so yeah there's your basic lip balm recipe there so I'm gonna use I guess for ease I'm gonna use three cups of this infused spearmint and living verbena oil look how rich that is it's just so beautiful. This is a one and a half cup measure. So that's my three cups there. Now I'm gonna put the lid on. We wanna get that up to the lower temperature. We may have to go high if it's not going fast enough, but hopefully we'll get that up to 150 degrees, not too long. Now I wanna talk for a moment about what's left over at this point. Um, we've got this uh, <clears throat> oil infused mash of leftover mint and lemon verbena. And you could just toss this into your composter <clears throat> and everything would love to eat this delicious for the nature but you could also take this and basically keep it around and use little bits of it in a tea strainer into your bath water it will probably make your bathtub turn green but if you have a green bathtub that's just perfect um, it will <laughs> it will come off eventually with enough elbow grease, but uh, it's very soothing and very delightful for a bath water to have uh, like an oil um, infused mash of, of mint and lemon verbena. You can also just make this into a tea in a pot, and like an oily tea, and then strain out the, the chunks and then put that in your bath. That's probably a better idea <laughs> if you don't like the old green ring. Some of us like to bathe in swamp water. Um, so another thing, the rest of the oil here I have, <clears throat> this is delicious mint and lemon verbena oil. And you can use this culinarily. It's got the avocado oil and the um, <clears throat> extra virgin olive oil. So there's nothing wrong with using this in cooking. And in fact, it'd be really great to add this to say, uh, lamb or fish, other meat dishes. You could also probably put it over a lovely vegetables, um, just wherever you'd want that very minty, lemony smell. I could see a pasta with vegetables 
and maybe a, a braised tofu as well. So don't throw any of the extra bits out. It's all really great. Use, use it all. So we've got three cups of that in there. Back to our recipe. Um, I'm going to add some vitamin E oil. We'll add to that at the end. Um, but back to one part of a plant-based butter, cocoa butter here. I've got a big cocoa butter block, and this is kind of intimidating. So I guess I need um, eight ounces or a cup of this. Let's see if I can get the scale teared out. Let's kind of give a guess. That's 4.9 ounces. Seven ounces. ounces of this plant-based butter. So let's get a cup or eight ounces of these beeswax pellets too. That's just the easier way to get beeswax. You can buy beeswax whole and then fight it like I'm doing with this, but way easier just to get it like that. Let's stick this aside, chop this up a little bit more. Basically, we need to get these guys in the pot and melting all together. And then we will have a massive amount of lip balm. There it is, eight ounces of cocoa butter. It's a very light cocoa butter. And then eight ounces of beeswax pellets going in with the three cups of infused oil. On at this point a low and a mini crock pot. Let's give that a stir. See if we can induce some melting in there. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Those all got to melt. Let's see what we can do. Okay, we're on. You gotta see this. Let's see what temperature this is. Right there. They're disappearing before our eyes. The magic of beeswax. This is when it goes from a big glob of this and that to finally becoming uh, it's actually was up a little high. It's up at 166. Let's go ahead and turn that all off now. Oh, what's that? Get whatever that was out. Look at that. Nope. Got a dangler. Get in there. 
<laughs> from these lovely things here into this beautiful melted wax cocoa butter and infused oil now we can fill these guys their little uh, little tins come with a clear top and bottom just fill those up and that's our lip balm let's get to that Okay, here they are, fresh hot salve, or not salve, fresh hot lip balm in their little tins. You can see the ones that are done first are already starting to solidify. Let those sit for a while. We'll see what those are. We'll come back to this. Check it out. <laughs> Still have a bunch left. Got to find some more tubes. And here it is, folks. Our beautiful, beautiful lip balm made from spearmint and lemon verbena. There's that lemon verbena. There's that spearmint. There's a bunch of lip balm that's all over the counter. That's the stuff. Look at that consistency. It's hard. It's oily. It's lip balm. And this is a recipe that you could adjust to your own um, preference. If you want a, a softer balm, you can reduce the number of the amount of beeswax in there. If you want a harder balm, go ahead and add more beeswax. Try different flavors. This is one that's very forgiving. Worst thing that happens is that you end up having to melt it all back down and add a few more ingredients to get it where you want it to be. Lip balm, it's easy. And this lip balm smells so amazing. It's got this minty, chocolatey smell with just a hint of the lemon in the background in the end here that you will just go crazy for. I'm looking forward to moistening my lips with this. Now, one thing to be aware of, to be wary of, is that lip balm can be very addictive, especially if you don't really want to start giving your kids lip balm constantly if they don't need it because then they could stop producing enough oils in their own lips to have good soft lips without lip balm. You can become addicted to it to where you need lip balm or you crack and bleed and that's no fun so try not to overuse lip balm but also it's a really great thing to have around if you've been in some weather There it is. See you later, folks. Love you.
No, you probably don't want to get pet. Oh, oh, slow down, bud. Hold me down cause I'll step up. I rise up, I rise up. There's a fire in my veins I can't stop out. I burn so bright that I have no doubt. I rise up, I rise up. Cause I am a champion. My pride will not be broken. I will believe and trust myself I rise up, I rise up The stars on my back have grown to wings I'll soar to the sky and live my dreams I rise up Cause I